This is one of the most profound uh, moments uh, for for me uh, personally, as well as 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 an astronomer, uh, because for the first time in the history of our species, we may actually be seeing signs of life elsewhere. This is K218b, an exoplanet eight times as massive as Earth, orbiting a red dwarf star about 120 light years from Earth. Discovered in 2015 by the Kepler Space Telescope, the planet has since stood out as a subject of keen interest amongst astrobiologists because A, it lies in the habitable zone of its star, and B, it could be a water world. As such, it was quite obvious that once the James Webb Telescope was launched, one of its objectives would be to turn its gaze towards the planet to look for signs of life. And in 2023, K218b made headlines when researchers reported that JWST observations of the planet were consistent with a habitable ocean world. To make matters more interesting, the same research team reported weak evidence for dimethyl sulfide, a compound that on Earth forms almost exclusively due to life. This led many onlookers to the eyebrow-raising conclusion that K218b is not just habitable, but inhabited. But there was only one way to know for sure, more observations. It's been two years since then, and repeated analysis of the exoplanet's atmosphere by the James Webb Space Telescope now suggests the presence of several molecules that on Earth have only one known source, living organisms. In this video, we'll explore everything we've uncovered in the atmosphere of K218b and hear directly from the man spearheading the discovery. Welcome to Territory. This is your space. Last year, Dr. Mad Husutan and his colleagues got a second chance to look for dimethyl sulfide. And here's how they detected the molecules in the atmosphere of K218b. So the technique we used to determine the atmospheric composition of the planet is known as transit spectroscopy. What is happening is that you look at the planet as it transits in front of the host star. So the atmosphere of the planet, some of the starlight goes through the atmosphere of the planet before reaching the telescope. And the atmosphere, the molecules in the atmosphere absorb some of that starlight. So by looking at a differential measurement when the planet is in front of the star or when it isn't, you can extract how much absorption is happening in the planet's atmosphere. So two years ago in 2023, we reported a very tentative inference of DMS uh, on this planet uh, with a different set of observations with a different instrument in the one to five micron range. But the evidence was very tentative. So we looked this time uh, at the planet again in a different wavelength range. And what we are finding is significantly stronger evidence at a three sigma level uh, for the presence of either DMS or DMDS or both. Now, DMDS, like DMS, is also a strong and unique biomarker here on Earth and had also been predicted to be a biomarker on planets uh, with hydrogen-rich atmospheres. And that is what is new, is that there's a possibility of, of one or both of these molecules to be present in the atmosphere at a, a credible um, level of uh, significance. What's surprising is that this time, the signal for dimethyl sulfide came back even stronger than the last time. Add to that, they also found dimethyl disulfide, which is another indicator. And no matter how many times the scientists reanalyzed the data, the signal stayed firm. Their conclusion? K218b might contain an astonishing abundance of dimethyl sulfide in its atmosphere, potentially thousands of times more than what we find on Earth. If true, it could mean that the planet's high sea and oceans are teeming with life. So let's come back to the big question. Does this confirm life beyond Earth? This is one of the most profound uh, moments uh, for, for me uh, personally, as well as, as, as an astronomer, uh, because for the first time in the history of our species, we may actually be seeing signs of life elsewhere. On the other hand, this could also uh, be a signal of a new chemical process that is not produced by life. And even that is a monumental breakthrough because however you put it, we are seeing new chemical processes on a planet that could be habitable. And we have shown this in theoretical studies that that was possible. So this is, in my view, a transformational moment, not just for planetary science, not just for astronomy, but for 
finding our place in the universe as a species. While this marks a significant step toward discovering life on an alien world, not all scientists share Dr. Madhusudhan's enthusiasm. They argued that even if K218b has a hydrogen atmosphere and a surface ocean of water, these factors alone wouldn't confirm the presence of life, but merely suggest the planet could be potentially habitable. And while the telescope did detect CO2 and methane on the planet, these gases are regularly produced by non-living processes. For example, NASA's Curiosity rover has detected methane on Mars, seeping from the surface of Gale Crater. But scientists haven't found convincing signs of current or ancient life on the Red Planet. Some scientists believe that there could theoretically be non-living ways that produce the compound on other planets. For example, a recent preliminary paper has reported evidence of dimethyl sulfide after analyzing data from Comet 67P. So you see, the best biosignatures on an exoplanet may differ significantly from those we find most abundant on Earth. So how do we interpret the telescope's data? A team from NASA Ames Research Center and the University of Washington approached this question by using two sets of models with the available web data. The first model describes rocky planets with surface oceans, with and without life, while the other set describes gaseous planets without a surface and without life. Both the models predict the planet's photochemistry, as in the chemical reactions in the atmosphere, driven by photons from the host star and also the climate of the exoplanet. The team found that K218b is unlikely to be a lifeless water world because such a planet wouldn't have enough methane in its atmosphere to match the JWST observations. So it looks like a water world with microbial life is more promising with simple methane producing organisms that may be able to produce the supply of methane seen in the planet's atmosphere. That is exciting, isn't it? But despite the excitement, the team found that the uninhabitable, gas-rich exoplanet model also fits the data well and may present fewer challenges. The ocean world model not only requires life to explain its atmosphere, but also struggles to reconcile the needed cool surface temperature with the likelihood of a runaway greenhouse effect. What this means is that the planet might be too hot for life to be present at all and hence the team suggests that efforts involved in looking for life on exoplanets should first test planetary temperature to ensure that it is not too hot to host an ocean. But this isn't the last word on K218b. There are features in the planet's spectrum that aren't well fit by a lively ocean world or a lifeless gas-rich planet, and both models have their challenges. These results are the product of just two observations, with many more on the way. This means that our work here is but an early demonstration of what Webb can observe in habitable zone exoplanets. Future data from JWST might dredge up a detection of ammonia, which would point to a gaseous planet or dimethyl sulfide, which would tilt the scales considerably toward an inhabited water world. In the meantime, the hunt for habitable planets goes on. More observations will tell us if the ocean world indeed holds life even if only in microscopic form. However, K218b is 124 light years away, and using traditional rocket propulsion technology, it would take us around a million years to get there. But what if we found something closer to home? A planet with a cloudy atmosphere and a temperate water ocean, half the size of the Atlantic. Ladies and gentlemen, the James Webb Space Telescope may have found the most promising signs of a potentially habitable planet beyond our solar system. Discovered in 2017, LHS 1140b is an exoplanet orbiting within the conservative habitable zone of its red dwarf star, LHS 1140. And what makes this exoplanet so special is that it is only 40 light years away from Earth. Further observations suggested that it might be a gas planet like Neptune, but smaller. That, however, changed when we turned our superstar telescope towards the planet in December last year. Webb's analysis, combined with data from the Hubble Telescope and Spitzer, suggests something very different. LHS 1140b appears to be one of the most promising exoplanets in a star's habitable zone, potentially harboring an atmosphere and even an ocean of liquid water. Yes, the exciting news is that Webb detected the presence of a nitrogen-rich atmosphere, suggesting the planet might have retained a substantial atmosphere, creating conditions that might support liquid water. But that's not where the excitement ends. 
According to Webb's data, between 10% and 20% of the exoplanet's mass might consist of liquid water, suggesting an intriguing vision of the planet. It could resemble a snowball orbiting its star in such a way that one side is always facing the star, similar to how the moon rotates around Earth, always showing the same face. That means the side of LHS 1140b facing the star would receive substantial heat, leading to the melted part of the snowball forming a liquid ocean. Now, a lot of you would say that this is just like every other super-Earth we have discovered in the last decade. Well, not really. The infamous TRAPPIST-1 star system, with seven planets orbiting it, has a strikingly similar layout to our solar system. However, when Webb turned its gaze towards it, we found that the system's star is highly active, potentially skewing observations and leading to false signs of habitability. That isn't the case with LHS 1140b. The star LHS 1140 appears to be calmer and less active, making it significantly less challenging to disentangle LHS 1140b's atmosphere from stellar signals caused by star spots, said Ryan McDonald from NASA, who aided the analysis of the exoplanet's atmosphere. Current models indicate that if LHS 1140b has an Earth-like atmosphere, it would be a snowball planet with a bullseye ocean about 4,000 kilometers in diameter. He even added that the surface temperature of the planet's ocean may very well even be a comfortable 20 degrees Celsius. So what's next? The team has now requested further transit and eclipse measurements with the Webb telescope, targeting a specific signal that could reveal the presence of carbon dioxide. Due to LHS 1140b's limited visibility with Webb, allowing for a maximum of eight visits per year, astronomers will need several years of observations to detect carbon dioxide and confirm the presence of liquid water on the planet's surface. But this is indeed a very promising start. What do you guys have to say? Drop in your comments to let me know. If you enjoy our content, kindly consider becoming a member to support us. And don't forget to subscribe to Territory, because this is your space.